And now from the always air-conditioned NBC commissary, it's lunch with Soupy, and today his guest, Dan Ingram. And now here's a polite and fully registered investment advisor, Soupy Sales. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. You're uh, welcome. Yes. Um, well, you know, you always notice when the weather gets cold because you have more people up here in the commissary. Well, that's you true. They don't want to go out in that cold weather. I don't blame them. Look, there's Paul Simon over there. Uh-huh. He's going to be uh, on Saturday Night Live this weekend. That's right. He's much taller when he stands. Yeah. <laughs> There's Angela Lansbury. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, tomorrow is the big day for wine lovers all over the world. That's when the uh, Beaujolais Nouveau, uh, if, that's, if I'm pronouncing it right, comes in. That's that, the wine that everybody looks forward to uh, every year. They rush down to the stores, and, and they like to be the first in line. That's a big thing. Mm -hmm. They said they they won't wait till dawn. Uh, they you know they start having the parties at midnight tonight. And uh, they say the uh, the latest vintage is always the best because the color and taste fade within 18 months. I find that happens to me when I've been out in the sun. <laughs> After 18 months, I it's just, just like I've never been out go. there. It's I've never been out there I know before. Know what you mean? Yeah. Well, we're gonna get some of that stuff tomorrow. Oh yes. Some That's of the it. first bottles in New York. First bottles, and we'll let you know how it is, folks. <laughs> and uh, oh, here he comes. Look at what's a big red carnation. Bonjour. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour, Bonjour to you. Bonjour. How are you today? Fine, and you, Jacques? <laughs> I'm there, fine, monsieur. I'm excited about uh, your guest, Mr. Dan Ingram. Oh, yeah. I used to listen to him all of the time. He's a very funny man. Yeah, you told me when you first came over, he was the uh, first one that you'd ever listened to. That's true. I did how I learned how to speak English. All right. <laughs> yes, Kimo Sabi. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> monsieur, I'd like to play a knock-knock joke with you. Okay. Oui. So you have to begin. Oh, 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 I'm Knock, sorry. knock, talk. Okay, okay. Uh, 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 knock, knock. Oui, knock, knock. Oh, oh, yeah, who's there? Le, le, le. Le, 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 who? Le, 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 dummy. Hey, it's your puppet, <laughs> le, dummy. Oui. Say hello to Monsieur le, dummy. Hello, Monsieur le, dummy. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> He's such a little wooden wise guy. Yeah. I need you like Hulk Hogan needs karate. <laughs> now, come on now, be nice, guys. Tell yes, me, be uh, nice, dummy. How, how is the act coming along? Uh, very well, Monsieur. We did another performance at the Catch a Rising Star last night. Oh, great. How'd it go? It was a very cold audience. A cold audience? We oui. picture 200 Roger Grimsby. Oh. <laughs> That's not even true, lad like, dummy. It was like the audience of the living dead. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> it was so. It wasn't. It was. No, no, no. We, oui, we, oui, we. Oui. Now cut it out. Uh, sorry, monsieur. He is not. I am so. I need you like newlyweds need David Letterman. <laughs> now don't be smart with me. Smart? Impossible. You're doing the voice. Guys, please. Why is it we do this every time? We get in a fight and an argument. I need you like a hole in the head. Oh. Oh, yeah? Guys. Yeah. You want a hole in the head? I'll go to the kitchen and get a drill. I'll give you a hole in the <laughs> Jacques, head. Jacques, where are you going with today's ask special? Ask the dummy. Ask uh, the dummy. Ask the dummy. Jacques, Jacques. I don't believe it. He's in the kitchen and I'm here with the puppet. Now what am I going to do? Only one thing more to do, monsieur. What's that? Mwah, mwah. You got a splinter <laughs> in my cheek here. Some horizon. There are hungry cow hands and a nervous cook. Huggy, this soup's different. No, sir. I tell you, it's different. It's not me, sir. It's Campbell's. Campbell's did it. Huggy, relax. This soup's better. Better because it's Campbell's vegetable soup with more and bigger vegetables. Because Campbell's knows that you love your vegetables. Even the broth is heartier. How about that race, boss? How about we just let you keep your job? <laughs> Campbell's soup is good food and keeps getting better. You're telling me this is one of Sears' biggest menswear sales of the year. Yes. Hundreds of items are 20 to 50% off. Hundreds of items are 20 to 50% off. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can I save on fall sweaters? Yes. Tops? Yes. Jackets? Yes. Can I save on flex slacks? Yes. yes. Suits? Yes. Arnie dress shirts? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sport coats? Yes, they're all on sale. How about ties? Yes. Flannel shirts? Yes. I see. All 20 to 50% off. Yes. And while quantities last, a special purchase of velour tops and fashion fleece. Just $13.99. I suppose you're calling this the uh, men's fall sweaters, tops, jackets, suits, dress shirts, sport coats, ties, flannel shirts, and a whole lot more sale. Yes. Clever. 
there is one catch. I knew it. Ostrich skin tie clips aren't on sale. No, it ends Saturday, November 22nd. Better hurry. Ooh, then I'd better hurry. Yes. Yes. There's more for your life. In the men's store. Yes. At Sears. Cigarette smoking is identified as an addiction by the National Institute on Drug Abuse. Think about that during the Great American Smokeout, Thursday, November 20th, and ask yourself, Am I addicted to nicotine? How many times have I tried to stop smoking and failed? Then see your doctor. He can help you kick the habit with an approach that includes treatment and special counseling to rid you of your craving for nicotine. With your doctor's help, you'll increase your chances of quitting for good. Merrill Dow Pharmaceuticals, dedicated to improving the health of Americans. Hi, this is Jim Carvelis inviting you to join Ernie Grunfeld and me for some great basketball as the New York Knicks take on the Philadelphia 76ers. Be here for all the action tonight at 7.20. There's only one place for the New York Knicks, 66 WNBC. Okay, we're back in the commissary as Lunch with Soupy continues. All right, thank you, Ray. You know, when uh, WABC was music radio, it was number one in New York, and the DJs were known as the All-Americans. Let's see, there there was uh, Herb Oscar Anderson, Scott Muni, Babalu, Cousin Brucie, Charlie Greer, and my guest. Dan Ingram. Oh, that's, that's right. That's beautiful. That's better than the food here. <laughs> yes. This food is worse than airline food. I, yes. I mean, it's so small. Yes. It's just a tiny little sandwich with only one side to it. Yeah. And, uh, of course, uh, Rick Sklar, who used to run WABC, said of Dan, uh, Ingram was our most polished production voice, and because his timing, delivery, and ability to take direction was so good, he was used on more contest and station promotion spots than the rest of the staff combined. Who did he say that to? He never uh, said that to me. He said it to a lot of people. Mm. And uh, at one time, Dan show ran up a 22 share in the afternoon drive and that's really incredible uh, in all phases of radio and i welcome my friend and yours dan ingram thank you hey it's a pleasure it's dan good to be with you, how Sue. are you i'm uh, i'm marvelous and warm and friendly and yeah, kind as yes. well, i i heard a, a commercial the other day that you weren't on <laughs> <laughs> yes i don't do preparation eggs, I yes try. and also you're you're also announcing on the david brenner show yes now, the nightlife show that's yeah. fun now let me ask you you and cousin brucey and scott muni were broadcasting from the, the Beatles hotel room when the Beatle mania hit in oh, 1964. Yeah. What, what do you recall from those days? Well, I remember being on the air and Scott and Bruce, we had had a new invention called RF microphones, which means that's not a guy. Yeah. That's, a, that's a microphone that broadcasts without wires. Oh, yeah. And all the other stations were stringing wires to get up to this hotel room yeah. to talk to the Beatles. Yeah. We already were on the air. We were right across the street with our little RF yeah. receiver and it was great fun. And we had 10,000 kids out in the street yeah. and uh, we got the kids to sing along with our jingles. Really? What was the thing it was something uh, somebody told me about a Ringo St. Christopher medal. Yes, uh, what uh, happened? a young lady. That was you talked about Rick Sklar before. The young lady had, uh, shall we say, borrowed R Ringo's Christopher medal off his <laughs> neck, and. Uh, Rick was one of the best promotion people in the world. What he did was, he put an announcement on the air. If anybody has this medal, please come to WABC. There'll be no problems. We'll take care of it. And you'll yeah. need Ringo and all that sort of stuff. Lady walked in 15 minutes later said, I got it. You know, it yeah. fell in my hand. Oh, yeah. He said, we're taking you to a hotel room. Called her mother. Got her mother. Said, would you like to go out on the town? We'll give you a Broadway show, a limousine, anything you want, dinner at the Waldorf. She said, fine. Well, we stashed this woman and her daughter in a hotel room overnight. Yeah. And the next day, we held a press conference because... Magically, the next day, we found this girl an hour before the press conference. <laughs> We're on every radio and TV station except QXR. That's right. Now, you played, now you went, went from uh, ABC uh, AM to FM, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's well, right. well, well, why would why'd they move you over to FM? Is, you know. I, well, well, I was at ABC AM. I yeah. also did an FM show called The Other Dan Ingram Show. The Other, that's right. The Other Dan Ingram. That was yeah. Saturday nights, played a little jazz and had some fun. Yeah. What, what was, like, when you were doing an AM, everybody remembers, oh, certainly remember FM. Them. What was like? What was like the big hits that uh, of that time? Oh, all the Shirelles and those yeah. people, and, the, and the, the Diana Ross and the Supremes in those days, and the uh, the Four Tops and the the Formers and all those great yeah. groups. What, what were the numbers that really made you cringe that you had to play that you didn't want? Oh, to? there was one record. It was the worst record ever made. <laughs> yeah. Angel Baby by Rosie and the Originals. <laughs> <laughs> the piano player playing the plink 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 yeah. plink loses the beat halfway through the record. <laughs> it's plink 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 plink. That's Funny. Well, now let, let's see. Now, now you, you're doing. You're announcing on the David Brenner show, mm -hmm. and uh, the last time I uh, talked with you, I think you were doing the afternoon on. Uh 
uh, WKTU. WKTU, then. Yeah, yeah. That for KTU. about a year, yeah. yeah. That was nice. Yeah. Then they went all album and said, uh, yeah. would you like to play albums? I said, oh, no, I love, love albums. And they said, well, the, the audience might be confused because you're a top 40 DJ. Yeah. So I said, fine, I'll stay home, send yeah. me the checks. <laughs> that's, that's right. And been, they did that for about a year. That was very nice. That's wonderful. They're Are you kidding? Well, oh, and, and, the best kind of work. And you have a syndicated show because your producer, Marlon Swing, lives in my apartment. Isn't he a yeah. wonderful He's man? He's a beautiful man. He is he probably really, the finest man I've ever met. He really is. Just a gentleman. Yes, yes, really. And, and he talked about you in glowing terms, you know. Well, he said exactly. something about you. And he told a very funny story this morning uh, on the way down because I gave him a lift about the guy that works for you over there that came in about, uh, tell us about Saturday night. What is that? I don't know what you're uh, talking about. About the porter or something there. That, some funny story. Oh, about, yeah. He, he what, was, I've forgotten the story because he told me while I was taping my syndicated show yesterday and I've completely forgotten it. You probably know it better. Oh, he, he said something about you two guys look like a famous painting and uh, they were standing next to each other and one of them said American, the other said Gothic. He said, no, those two people stand in front of the farmhouse. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, now tell me, what, what about the difference between now and radio and then when you started? Oh, it's totally different. The audience has split up so much. I mean, we did have a 20, as a matter of fact, we had a 26 share. In now, how many stations were in New York at the time when you had a Over 22? 50. Over 50. At the time? But a lot of them were simulcasting on FM. Yeah. And that was just about the time when FM started to have separate programming. The FCC yeah. ordered it. And uh, we had a 26 share, which, of course, meant that 74% of the people were not listening to me. Yeah. Which I always remember. <laughs> but now, there is no such thing. I mean, the number one station in New York has a six. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, the, the audience is just spread over a million different kinds of little fractional formats, and that's totally changed the face of broadcast. Okay, now, I someone asked me to, to do a word association with you, and uh, I'll say a few phrases, and you react, okay? Okay. The principle of the year contest. Oh, yeah. Unbeknownst to anybody else, that started at KBOX in Dallas, Texas. Uh huh. Is that where, where are you from? I'm from New York, from Flushing. Yeah, that's what I thought. 27, 29, 166th Street, just north of Northern Boulevard. Oh, that's great. And you went, and, you, and where was your first job? My first job was at uh, WNRC in New Rochelle, which is now called WVOX. Yeah. And that's where my first job is that was. Where was it really? Oh, yeah. No kidding. And then I moved out. I stayed there for a couple of months. I got a paycheck that bounced. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that kind of decided it. <laughs> so did you, did you, did you, W-A-L-K in Patchogue, Long Island was the first real job. So I then had. you went to Texas? And then I went from there to New Haven, Connecticut, to Channel 8, did a couple of years of TV. Yeah. And then I got an offer at KBOX in Dallas, Texas. Is that where the uh, principle of the That's year contest? The now, of the now year what was contest. the principle of the year contest? Well, we decided that all you have to do is send in a postcard or a card, anything that you can write your name or your principal on, and the, from what school that has the most of them, the principal's the principal of the year and gets a color TV set. That was a simple uh, contest, and we wow. all, had, all the dance. Then uh, we did it in W. In St. Louis, when I moved there, those people who owned the station in Dallas took me to St. Louis. They owned the station there, and uh, then uh, started at New York. The first year I got in New York in '61. Well, it, it, you got you, a few letters, didn't you? Oh yeah, it went up to site my 14 million. Wow! Because Rick Rick Sklar <laughs> expanded the contest, made it better. He said, just put on a three by five file card. Yeah. We had 14 million of them, and there was a shortage of file cards <laughs> in the East Coast of the United States. Wow, that is really. They had something. to have mechanical counters and everything. It took them a month to count all. Yeah. People well, what happened? Trucks. All of a sudden, what happened to to the big thing over there uh, when, when Rick Sklar was was the head of it, and you guys? What happened to the radio? They just did away with the all music, or what? Well, what happened was uh, the uh, was a great word, ineluctable. It means not only inevitable, but inevitable on schedule. Yeah. The ineluctable drift of people for, who look for music to go from AM to FM was just going on. And WABC was such a monster that New York was the last market in the United States for that shift to take place. Yeah. It went all the way through 19, oh, 1979 before it became major. And uh, that's what happened. They, yeah. just, they got to a point where they only had an 11.5 and said, well, we've got to go all time. <laughs> that's wow. The truth. What about, now, tell me about, tell me about uh, Ingram's added inch. <laughs> well, there's two versions of that story. Yeah. The one I can tell you on the air is that uh, when they uh, when they built the console, <laughs> when they built the console in uh, Studio 8A, which is where we used to come out of, uh, they built a desk to go with it, and the desk was only about four inches of desk space uh -huh. for you to put the log down and to yeah. write, and the yeah. log would hang off in your lap. And I said, that's not good enough. 
So they put another piece on there with a little clamp so it'll fall underneath and then open up for Ingram. I call it that Ingram. Oh, that was it. Okay, yeah. now what about, uh, there's another someone asked me to ask you, because you got a lot of fans. I, I think that's oh, wonderful. That's kind of, because, you. I mean, you wouldn't be in the business this long if you, if you didn't. Uh, they, uh, how about the brief showers? Oh, that was fun. That's when Bruce Morrow came back. He'd been shopping one day. And it was uh, about the time I was reading the weather forecast. He walked in, and he had just definitely bought himself a dozen jockey underwear shorts. Yeah. And I said, then the forecast is brief showers. Yeah. And I got showered with briefs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dozen, dozen sets of underwear. It went up in the air, and I just completely broke up. I'm hard yeah. to break up. But I went completely. I was totally, absolutely broken up. Had to go to a record. Just couldn't do it. Yeah, of course, if, if Bruce would have been wearing them and jumped on you, you'd say, boy, there's heavy showers. <laughs> heavy briefs. Okay, I'll tell you what we'll do. Uh, because you got so many fans, when we announced that you are going to be on the show, and they said, we want to talk to, to Dan. Well, that's perfect. So give us a call, 247-8666, and you can talk with Dan Ingram. Uh, Two, we'll let, what? Go ahead. 247-8666. Yeah, what? We'll let Dan introduce her record. Okay. How would that be? Okay, I'd love it. I'd love okay, it. Okay, this record takes me back to uh, 1961. <laughs> I think it was when Ben E. King made a number one hit tune out of it. Remember Stand By Me? Well, it's a hit again because the movie is out with the same name, and Mr. King's going to do it one more time once, right here on WNBC. Yeah. In the night. Yeah. All right, thank you, Ray. And uh, I want to tell you now, with the holidays coming up, you want to look your best, and you're going to, if you uh, take a trip over to Westchester and see my friend over there, Gene Lubins, because Lubins has developed an exciting concept in men's suits, sport coats, and accessories called the Charles One Boutique, and styled to the European silhouette for the man proud of his image. And you know, if you dress good and you look good, boy, there's no place you can't go, and nobody you wouldn't want to be seen with or deceived, because the clothes Clothes really make the person, and of course, Lubin's really features beautiful clothing and apparel par excellence from designers such as Armani, Ungaro, Valentino, D Daniel Shagan, and many others. And Lubin's trained sales personnel will assist you in complementing your clothing choices with the proper accessories. And don't forget now, Lubin's 12 expert in-house tailors will not let you wear uh, those selections unless they fit you perfectly. So you go see the best of Lubin's and the sense of excitement of shopping in the trend-setting Charles One Boutique. And of course, Lubin's. It's in Westchester. It's in the Yonkers Cross County Shopping Center. They're open Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 9.30 p.m., Saturdays from 10 to 7, and Sundays from noon to 5. you got another week now until Thanksgiving rolls around. And, of course, after that comes Christmas and New Year's, and you want to be looking your best when those holidays come around. So you go see my friends over at Lubin's, and Lubin's Personal, and all major credit cards are accepted. And remember, there's always plenty of free parking. That's in Westchester, Lubin's, and that's in the Yonkers Cross County Shopping Center. You go over and see my friend Gene Lubin. You're going to see some beautiful clothes over there. It takes all kinds. You know the worst thing about being a designer? It's sitting around in this chair all day with everyone expecting everything you do to be a fashion statement. Even my clothes have to be a fashion statement. And my car. Ah, oh, my car. My new 1987 Ford Taurus GL sedan. Now that's where I'd like to be right now. Oh, sure, it's visual. Motor Trends 1986 Car of the Year winner, but its beauty is more than skin deep. Besides the special clear coat paint job, it came with a premium sound system. When I bought a special package of options, it saved me over $700. And then my dealer and I got really creative. They say it takes all kinds. Your Ford dealers got them. Come on, guys, let's go to lunch. I'll drive. You know the best thing about being a designer? You always have the excuse of going in style. Yup, it takes all kinds. And your Ford dealers got them. Savings based on manufacturer's suggested retail price of option package as compared to traditional suggested prices of option purchased separately. Lisa Scott was always one of the smartest students in school. Straight A's, valedictorian, the dean's list. But when she entered the business world, she discovered it wasn't her mind that would help her get ahead. I'm thinking of promoting you, Lisa. Why don't we talk about it over dinner? This week, Chuck Scarborough reports on one of the unpleasant realities in business, sexual harassment on the job. Tune in at 5, 6, and 11 on Channel 4. And New York Knicks basketball on 66 WNBC is sponsored in part by AST Sound in Lower Manhattan. The following is a paid commercial. You bet it is, or else it wouldn't be on this show. Wow. And I'm talking about the wonderful folks at Slim Fast. And of course, Slim Fast is the under 1,300 calories a day diet that uh, everybody's talking about. And of course, uh, WNBC's own Al Rosenberg, who you hear on uh, Joey Reynolds' show and Imus' show, he's taken the challenge. He's been on the plan for over four weeks. He's lost over 17 pounds. He, he lost a whole body. 
guess you so. know, yeah. And Al's looking great, and he says he feels even better. Of course you do when you lose weight, and you, those clothes look good, and you look in the mirror and you go, hey, that's really me, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's uh, where Slim Fast comes in, because the plan <laughs> is nutritionally complete, and Slim Fast prides itself in only the highest quality, best tasting products. The Slim Fast line, you can find it in your nearby grocery store, supermarket, your favorite drug store, and of course the lineup of meals and snacks include Slim Fast shakes, Slim Fast nutrition bars, Slim Fast cookies, of course you, the shakes when uh, mixed with skim milk made a delicious vitamin packed drink available in chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, and chocolate malt. The nutrition bars are a highly uh, energy helpful snack and uh, fill you between meals and oatmeal and raisin cookies to satisfy your cravings for sweets. And of course the Slim Fast diet plan is delicious. You really look forward to every meal and snack and you won't even believe you're dieting. So you look for them in your favorite grocery store, supermarket, drugstore. The Slim Fast diet plan is a natural way to lose weight. It's effective and you lose weight fast. And of course Slim Fast pledges to the dieters, give them a week and they'll take off the weight. So next time you're out shopping, you look for the Slim Fast line of wonderful, uh, high quality, nutritional, uh, great tasting products. And like I always say, stop, look, and listen. And okay, we got some calls. If you'd like to talk to uh, Big Dan Ingram, the number is 247-8666. I can't tell you how happy I am to see you, Dan. I'm uh, glad yeah, I'm, I'm here, too. I'm glad you dropped around. If I wasn't here, I'd be somewhere else, and I wouldn't be having any fun. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> no. Good afternoon, WNBC. Hi, Zoopy. Hi, who's this? This is Skip Rooney, Zoopy. How are you? Hi, Skip. You want to talk to Dan? I sure do. Go ahead. Hello, Skip. Hi, Dan. Uh, this is Skip Rooney from the Uncle Floyd Show, Dan. Yeah. And I just uh, want to say that uh, you and Soupy Sales, of course, are probably my two big heroes. Uh-huh. And I want to tell you sincerely, Dan, that you're one of the reasons why I got into uh, broadcasting. I work for Bruce Morrow, you know. Oh, that's too bad. And... <laughs> <laughs> now, Bruce is one of the nicest guys around. He truly is. Yeah, he Charming is. guy. He's nice. He's, I imagine he's good to work for, too. He is. He was my boss for two and a half years. I was his midday guy at uh, one of the stations, uh, WRAN in Dover, New Jersey, one of the stations that he owned. Uh-huh. And I can't tell you the number of times that we sat around his office after my show uh, talking about the great days at WABC. I remember both of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to say, Dan, in all sincerity, that uh, I, I still think to this day that uh, Dan Ingram is probably the best afternoon drive disc jockey in this country. And uh, well, thank you. I That's just wish uh, some uh, programming uh, program director in New York would bring you back and leave you on the air no. because uh, the great days of WABC. No. no, 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 I won't do that anymore. Not anymore? I'll tell you why. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I'm 52 years old. I'm not going no secret of that. Um, I had a wonderful time for 21 years at WABC, and about two years ago, a radio station made me an offer of an awful lot of money to do three hours a day, five days a week, six weeks vacation, six Mondays or Fridays off for long weekends, and all holidays off. And I said no. And they said, why? I said, well, I don't need a surrogate family. I've done that. That's what a radio station is. And I'm 50 years of age, and I don't want to look back at 60 and wonder why I didn't do all those things I haven't done yet. So I started to do them, and I'm having a great time out of life, and uh, maybe someday, but uh, wait till I'm about 70 years old, and I'll come back and, you know, do really ancient... I mean, I'll die on the air if you want, you know. I did a lot when I was at ABC anyway. You did. Dan, let, let me ask you this. Uh, do you feel that a lot of people have said in this business that the Z100 uh, took WABC's old format, put it on the FM stereo, and they're successful basically due to uh, copying uh, WABC, or do you think that they're doing like a completely uh, different thing than from what you guys did years ago. They're doing what's currently called Hot Hits, which used to be called Top 40, which of course is what WABC did, but it wasn't exclusive to WABC. A lot of stations did that. How would you feel if uh, WABC went back to all music again? Do you think that they would be uh, I'd probably uh, more have successful a little... with uh, what they're doing now than talk? I mean, uh, the ratings that they're getting now, as far as talk radio, can't compare to what they got when they were music radio. Do you think that they should go back to a Top 40 format in 1986 or leave it the way it is? Well, in the first place, being a talk station is all right, but it's what you talk about that counts, and they talk about some rather esoteric, strange things. You know, I mean, I don't really care about the effects of acne on pygmies. I mean, they, <laughs> they get into these weird subjects, and uh, not many people relate to that. Yeah, if they went back to music, I'd probably feel a twinge of nostalgia, but that's about it. Yeah. Dan, outside of uh, you doing the Top 40 satellite thing uh, on radio, uh, where, where else uh, can you be? Have you got any other, like, radio projects that we can, uh, you know, look forward to you seeing, or, uh, or listening to you, rather, or is that about it for right now? Top 40 satellites 
Minute Survey, which I do for the CBS Radio Radio Division, winds up at the end of December. It'll be the last show I do for them. Yeah. And I'm in the process of trying to put together a deal with some other people who want to syndicate a different kind of a show, not a Top 40 show. Mm -hmm. And that will premiere, I assume, somewhere in February or March, because I like working one day a week. Yeah. There's something charming about coming into a studio Wednesday morning, 10 o'clock, and walking out at 1 in the afternoon. He works <laughs> one day a week? One day a week. He works one day a oh, week? Oh, yeah. I Top work, dollar. I, work, I work three days a week for David Brenner. I go in Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 5.30, and we're out at 7.30. He works one day shows. a week. <laughs> That's pretty good. It's not I really work. Yeah. Uh, Dan, do you believe Carson's... I still have my chemo sabi card from your show back in 1960? Skip, listen, Skip. Yeah, uh, you know, we'd like to let some of the others here. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, right. uh, you could tell he worked for Bruce, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you, we'll see you, Skip. Skip, thank you for calling. Thank you, Skip. Thank you, Thank you, Subi. Thank thank you Dan. Yeah. Bye -bye. Okay. And also, Dan is running for the presidency of AGVA this year. Uh, no, AFTRA. 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 American yeah. Federation American of Television Federation. and Radio yes. Arts. So if and anybody has a union card, they're getting a ballot yes. in the next well, few days. Well, you're getting my vote, I'll tell you that. Thank you kindly. Well, okay, let's take another call. Uh, good afternoon, WNBC. Hi, Soupy. This is Dennis from Patterson, New Jersey. Hi, Dennis. You're on the line with Dan Ingram. Hi, Dan. How you doing? I'm good. Do, 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 I, do, I, do, I, do, I've been <laughs> off the air so long I forgot how to talk. <laughs> Dennis, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Well, Skip really did a number on me. Just about covered everything I wanted to yeah. talk to you about. <laughs> uh <-huh>. uh <laughs> Again, the question was, when are you going to come back on a day, uh, daily basis? Nope. Not we miss do you it. in drive time. Thank you. Um, tried to get a hold of you back when you did a little stint there with KTU. A little stint, that was it. Yes, it was about a year of that. A little stint, that was it. Yes, it was about a year of that. Was, uh, that, that was a nice good, party. It was a nice party at uh, Hard Rock, yeah, and all that. Oh, that was good. They're nice people to work for. Hey, someone just arrived with a uh, diet soda here for me, which I'm about to open. Oh, I don't like these kind of cans. That's where all the dog stuff goes down into the soda. <laughs> when you open it up. And... Ah, there we go. I'll just yes. push this to one side and I take a step. Your thumb fell off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Dennis, for calling. All right, thank you. Have you. a nice day. Dan, what was it? Well, give us the, the lineup at ABC at, at, like, at the height of the big, you know. Herb uh, Oscar Anderson was, in the morning, and yep. then right after that, Harry Harrison in the morning. They were both kind of co-equal there in the morning. Yeah. Uh, followed by Ron Lundy, who was on from 9 to noon. And uh, let's see, who was on after that? Oh, was it Herb Oscar? He was on, he was on till, till 9, right? Yeah, he was on. No, he was on till 10. And Lundy was yeah. on from 10 to 2. Yeah. And then, uh, oh, I was on after yes. that. So yes, I couldn't sir. remember the you name. You were on what, from 2 to from 6? From 2 to 6. Yeah. Then Bruce was on from 6 to 10. Yeah. And Chuck Leonard, who is on WRKS now, doing real good, very high numbers, yeah. very well rated. He was on from 10 to midnight. And Charlie Greer did the all-night show. Yeah, well, in those days, it seemed to me that, because uh, I had just first come to New York in 1964, you guys and the good guys, that was like the two stations uh, that everybody listened to. MCA. Well, yeah, they, we yeah. originally were the good guys. They stole it from us. Oh, really? So we decided we are going to call ourselves the All-Americans. We couldn't steal that. Yeah. <laughs> and I left out one name, Bob Lewis. Bob Lou. Bob Lou. Bob Lou. Bob Lou was yeah. on weekends and, yeah. uh, and did some FM work and uh, uh, eventually decided that he was going to go over the real coin is and he left to do commercials and he's one of the most successful voiceover announcers who, in the business. Did, tell us, uh, before, and a dynamite guy, too. Yeah, who did you see in those days that you knew? I mean, nobody had heard of that you knew that they were going to become a big record star? Uh, well, I'll tell you about my musical judgment. In 1963, <laughs> yeah. a guy played this VJ album for me and said, what do you think of the group? I said, they're okay. It was the Beatles. Oh, yeah. So, well, yeah. I mean, I have about as much judgment in music well, as a mule. Well, of course, you, you, you know, that was just playing a record. Uh, probably if you would have seen them, it probably would have even... Oh, when I a... saw them, I thought they looked weird. You know, I mean, I would have... Yeah, know. well, they really did. To, to most it was different in those days. Yeah. Now they look weird because they look so conservative. Yes, you know, right. uh, you know by, I said this not too long ago. I said, to, by today's standards, they really look normal, you yeah. know. Oh, yeah. uh, but in those days, that really was something. Sure. Okay. So Good even after... Jimmy Carter had a haircut like that later That's on. That's right. right. Good afternoon, WNBC. Yeah, Soup, how you doing? Hi, who is this? This is Ed Nolan's at Massapequa Park. Okay, Ed, you're on the line with Dan Ingram. Hello, Ed. Hey, Dan, how you doing? I think I'm doing okay, but I haven't checked yet. It's too early in the day. Hey, I, I'll tell you, I grew up with you on uh, old ABC over there. Uh -huh. One great jock. I, that was one powerful lineup they had going over there. Yeah, we had some good people. It was I'll great fun. You. 
Yo, it was pretty funny, though. I was remembering, uh, I got your old show on tape, one of the last shows you did, and uh, toward uh, the end of the, your little intro, yeah. you talk about the Ingram mess and all that, the tape started slipping up, and you were saying, well, it's T-minus two, the tape's going anyway, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> that was the story over there. We had a thing called, uh, well, when, when engineers can work and don't, can't get fired, what do you call that, tenacity? No, uh, <laughs> something like that. There's a, there's a word for it, I've forgotten what it is, temerity or something like that. But we had one or two engineers there who were about 117 years old and just didn't know about rock and roll. They were nice men, but you'd point at them and they'd say, oh, you want to play the record now? You know, and we're trying to do a tight format. So I got to the point where I just started having a good time and laughing. And when anything would break in the studio, I would tell the engineer, fix it now, but I will complain about it being broken at the end of your shift so you can go on overtime. And I did that a lot. ABC put out a lot of money, the engineers, and they're all very nice to me. They're a good bunch of people. Okay, thank you, Ed. You're welcome. Take care. Have a nice day. Good afternoon, WNBC. Hey, good afternoon, Soupy. This is Larry in Stanford, Connecticut. Hi, Larry. You're Larry on the line. Larry Stanford. How are you? How are you doing, Dan? Yeah. I'm doing all right. How are you doing? Oh, pretty well. I got a question for you. What uh, do you do for a living, Larry? Well, I'm not working right now. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, Neither I am I. A question for you about uh, changes in radio. Okay. Do you feel that, uh, I feel like I'm getting very tired of radio stations that for contests do nothing but be the 20th caller and uh, you'll win whatever prize. Yeah, it's not very imaginative getting out of here. Do you think stations are not, don't want to be as daring? Or could they have the kind of contest you had in the 60s that get the audience more involved and get good ratings? Yeah, like the contest we hear would be the 10th caller and you get the prize. <laughs> they've gone all the way to 20 now. That's, that's the state of inventiveness and creativity in radio. Uh, no, we had some interesting contests, you know, like we had uh, the Mona Lisa contest. That was Rick Clark's idea. That the people sent in the most uh, authentic copy of it, the smallest, the largest, the largest covered uh, Ebbets Field out in the, the, the out, outfield there. The smallest was a micro dot. The most artistic was selected by Salvador Dali, and it was uh, a cartoon version of it. And he said, this is going to be called pop art next year. And it was. Hmm. And, uh, you know, those kind of contests don't happen much anymore. You know, we're going to send you to the Bahamas and leave you there kind of contest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I, I agree with you. There's not a hell of a lot of creativity in, in contesting these days. It's too much just give away the money and scream about it. At least, at least on the top 40 stations. Yeah, do you think that today in the top 40 CHR radio, the jocks aren't given, you know, as much, they don't really, with the exception of morning drive, they aren't allowed to talk, they aren't allowed to really mm -hmm. scream or make the audience feel part of it or whatever yeah. today as opposed to the 60s. That's true, but I always felt that if you move the goalposts closer together, you still have to try to kick a field goal, and that's the way I viewed that kind of restrictions. And there always were those kind of restrictions, and they got more and more as time went on because radio station managers got more and more nervous about what was going on in the air and whether or not it was meeting the right audience. And I think without, not without some justification, as we can see currently from what's going on with what station losing its license and all that stuff. The, the only final comment I have, Dan, is I know you don't, you don't want to be on the radio full time right now, but I think right. you're one of the few people that could make any format in radio interesting and exciting to listen to. Well, thank you. I, I might have trouble on a Spanish language station, though. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for calling. Thank you for Thank calling, you. Larry. All right, we'll be back uh, with my guest, Dan Ingram, but first, these very important words. In all contests broadcast on WNBC, employees of NBC and their immediate families are not eligible to win. Taxes are the sole responsibility of the winner, who may be recorded and played back later. Winners of prizes valued at $200 or more may not participate in another contest for 60 days. Void where prohibited by law. All federal, state, and local laws and regulations apply. No substitutions for prizes permitted. Winners may be required to execute an affidavit of eligibility within 30 days of notification. Wednesday, it's Macy's one-day sale with extra shopping hours and 20 to 50% savings throughout the store. Save on the latest cold weather fashions. Take 20% off already reduced prices on a huge selection of ladies' coats and jackets. Save on fine jewelry, housewares, domestics, electronics. 20 to 50% savings in just about every department. Shop 9 a.m. till late at the one-day sale. Wednesday at all Macy's in New York, Connecticut, and New Jersey, where Bamberger's is now Macy's. Okay, let me ask you this question. Is commuting dragging you down? Well, now yeah. you can make your commute time work for you. Let Motorola help you add productive hours to every business day. It's magic. They perform this magic with their full line of exclusive cellular portable telephones. Everything from handhelds, small enough to fit in your pocket, to economical walk-around models. And these 
are go-anywhere phones. You can use them in your car, on the street, in a taxi, a bus, or a train, and all Motorola high-quality cellular telephones are made right here in America. So you can trust their nationwide professional sales and service team to serve all your cellular needs. With nine different portable models, they don't force fit their phones. And don't forget now, leading accountants remind you that you only have weeks to take advantage of existing tax laws. So you call Motorola today, toll-free at 1-800-222-1637. That's 1-800-222-1637. 222-1637 in New Jersey, dial 447-7290. That's 447-7290. So be more productive, lower your stress, get the right tax treatment. You call Motorola now, 1-800-222-1637 in New Jersey, dial 447-7290, Motorola. And this afternoon is going to be mixed sun and clouds, cold highs about 40. Tonight, clear and cold, lows 25 to 28. Tomorrow, increasing cloudiness, rain likely by evening, high in the mid-40s. Outlook for Friday. Friday is partly cloudy, windy, and cold. The temperature right now is 37. Hey, fella! Oh, uh, hold on to your wallet, Dan. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh hiya, fella. There he is. He's Jerry the waiter. How are you, Jerry? Uh, I'm a victim of circumstance. Oh, yeah? What's wrong? I need a new car radio. What's wrong with your old car radio? It fades when I go under things. What, like bridges and tunnels? No, like clouds and voids. Oh. <laughs> Does it fade all the time? It's fading constantly. It's getting office from Atlantic City. Well, how, old, how old is it? This radio is so old. Whenever I turn it on, a white dog comes around to listen oh, to yeah, it. That's uh -oh. old. That's yeah, old. <laughs> but the new radios are much more powerful. Yeah, how powerful are they? They say they don't fade, even when going through a car wash. Really? Yeah, they just gargle a little. <laughs> Serve the food, they just gargle Fainty. a little. Why do I ask you? Uh, uh, here's some uh, bread and butter, but we can't get them to mesh because the butter's always frozen and the help is always fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'd like to say, the menu's sort of loose. Have a small French pastry. I call it mini mousse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you for the phone, Jerry. But what's for lunch? Pepsi and oysters. <laughs> Pepsi and oysters? What kind of a lunch is that? It's for people who think young and feel old. Say goodbye, Jerry. <laughs> goodbye, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> is with us today. And uh, Dan Ingram is my guest. If you want to talk to Dan, give us a call, 247-8666. I just swallowed an oyster. Yes. Uh -oh. Okay. Look out. Look Good out. afternoon, WNBC. Hello, Soupy. How are you? Fine. Who's this? This is Tim from Brooklyn. Okay, Tim, you're on the line with Dan. Thank Hi, you. Tim. Hi, Tim. How you doing? All right. Thank you. Listen, a couple of summers ago, another station on FM, they had the uh, reunion with all the old jocks from, mm -hmm. from uh, you know, from yeah, it, was, it was fun to go back and see how old all those other, other guys are. Oh, what a day that was. That was something else. Yeah, really. it was fun. That was fun. Is there any plans on something happen like that again? I don't know. I don't think so. As contact. far as I know, you can it call... It was spectacular. It was CBS FM, and you it was call, spectacular. Right. Call Joe McCoy over there. He's a PD, and ask him if he wants to do it again. No. I'll do it again. I don't mind. That's fine. I, you know, one weekend a year is great work. I like that. <laughs> you, you, you ever see any... I mean, I know everybody asks you this question. Do you ever see the, the guy? I see Ron Lundy a lot. He's one of my dearest friends. I saw Harry just uh, Harry Harrison just a week ago. Uh, Bruce Meyer I see off and on, and that's about it. It's but, really something, because you I guys... I see Scott so once in a while. Great yeah. names in New York radio, really. Just, just That's wonderful. Uh, we never knew it at the time. No, you we really did. never did. We lived did, on yeah. a little microcosm, and I'd yeah. go in, and a waiter would give me a table, and I would wonder why. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me that story about the time you went out to, uh, what was it, Corvettes and Yonkers? Oh, yeah. And, no, it was at Klein's. Oh, Klein's, at yeah. At the time. Because you yeah. didn't know what was going no, on. No, you know what? You're absolutely right. When I was doing my show, you know, in 64, 65, mm -hmm. and 66, it was like in, in, in 64. And, you know, you, like you said, you're inside working all the yeah. time. And you yeah. really have no idea of what is going on and the popularity and the following that you have. Mm -hmm. And I never will forget, my first album that came out for on uh, ABC Paramount. Mm -hmm. uh, it was A Spy with a Pie. Oh, and, yeah. And we did, uh, they had said, well, you're going to go to Klein's and Yonkers. And I went out there, and I ne and there was a riot. They, had a, they stole 300 albums. <laughs> and, and, and really, and, and, and it was... Ain't no uh, fool. No, and it was really, I said, I, you know, I have the... They said, you, you have the best-selling album? I said, no, but I have the best-stolen album <laughs> That's right. in New York. And I never will forget, and, and it was just a shock to me that everybody, you know, that yeah. all of a sudden you knew you had fans, and I never will forget, well, we were running for the car, and I tripped and fell down, and the kids were running, and I was laying there, and nobody, you know, I couldn't get up, and they were all grabbing, and one kid was hitting me with one of those big, heavy cardboard cylinders. Really? And I looked up, and I said, why are you doing that? He says, I just wanted to touch you. You know, <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, just like you say. Reach out and kill someone. That's right. right. <laughs> Good afternoon, WNBC.
Hello. Hi, Sue. Yeah, who's this? Hi, this is Steve from Morristown. Yes, Steve, you're on with Dan. Hi, Dan. Hi, Steve. I wanted to ask you, I used to listen to you a lot on HBO, and I haven't heard you recently. Uh -huh. I was wondering if uh, you were there anymore. Well, I used to do a show called Coming Attractions on HBO. Right. And uh, a new regime came in, and they were going to put it on camera, and I did about three or I've four weekends. I've seen it a couple times. Yeah, on camera. And they spent their budget, and they ran out of money, yeah. and they're not going to do it. So that's off, and the show I used to do, the audio show, the, uh, the voiceover show, is off too. So I have no idea what they're going to do, but the problem is the coming attraction show on HBO, they have ratings on HBO, you know. Right. And the coming attraction show was the second highest rated show on HBO ahead uh -huh. of their $3 million movies. Yeah. So they didn't love that show too much. You guys were better than the movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you really, you're a very familiar voice all over the place, and uh, I used to listen to you a lot, and I miss you. And I really enjoyed radio back then, and uh, I guess with Soupy Show, you can enjoy it again. Thank you. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for Thanks calling. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Good afternoon, WNBC. Good afternoon. Hi, who is this? Charlie. Hi, Charlie. You're on with Dan. Dan, what did Gehilska Day mean? Gehilska Day meant I love you. Oh, really? Yeah. In what? Uh, in uh, Norwegian or Swedish or something like that. One of those languages. Very good. That's it was just a way of saying goodbye to the audience. Very good. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Charlie. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye. Good afternoon, WNBC. Hello? Yes. 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 Hi. Hi. Why don't you turn your radio down? Why don't you turn your radio down? Um, hello? Hello? Hello, turn your radio down, please. It's bothering us. Okay. Okay. Can you reach your radio and turn it down now? Yeah, I'm okay. sorry. Okay, okay. Well, okay, hi, my name's Sandy. Sandy? Yeah, how you doing, Dan? I'm doing fine, Dan. Good. How are you doing? Uh, okay, thank you. Good, that's good. The um, operation is success? I uh, just wanted to say that uh, I used to listen to you all the time. It's had an effect on you, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> listen, if you drink a lot of water, it'll go out of your system. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> okay, no, but anyway. You go know, ahead, Sandy. Uh, when, when they took you off the air, I stopped listening to that station. Oh, good. I really did. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> because, uh, you know, you, you were the reason why I listened to it. Well, you're the reason I was broadcasting. Well, I really appreciate, you know, I, you really have such a really masculine voice. I just love it. It goes with my body. Uh, well, I'm going to do something about it. It's getting too hot here. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a raving heterosexual. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, Sandy, thank you for calling. Okay. Thank have you, Sandy. Day for all okay. Have a good day, bye. 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 All right. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Dan. I, tell you, I, I hate to say this, but that's it. we've come to the end of the line. But you gotta come back. Okay. Okay. I just must tell you that there is a meeting at the New York Hilton on Monday, the after membership meeting, and I'll be there. Hey, we'd be going. We hang out with the press. Yeah, right? I like that. Are you kidding? Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. Listen, if I come back, can you have better food than this? I yeah. mean, this oh, really oh, well. Okay. I mean, you have had better food yeah. on, on Texas Airlines. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, yes. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, listen, I do want to thank you so much, Dan, thank you. Uh, for, for, for taking time out and coming around. You also, you'll see and hear Dan on the David Brenner Show uh, Monday through Fridays and yep. uh, about 300 other commercials, and, uh, and uh, it's fun. New syndicated show new, next year. New syndicated show next Something year. Something charming about money in the mailbox. I like that. Uh -huh. It is. Right now, right now in Kansas City, there's a commercial running, and this guy, this voice is saying, we ask these women to give up soap and, <laughs> and, and, and use Dove, and I'm getting paid for it, That's, even as we sit here. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? That what a great. country. What a guy. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Boy. Which is why I'm running for president of AFTA. I don't blame Because I made you. an awful lot of money off yes. those contracts, and I think I should do something yes. to pay it back. Yes. Well, someone asked me about it, and I said, well, I said, Dan, uh, you know, looking at your record, I said, he'd be my uh, second choice. Yeah. And they asked me, he said, who'd be your first choice? I said, anybody who runs against him. <laughs> <laughs> I was just kidding. Dan, you're our man. Thank you. Dan Thank Ingram, you. everybody. Thank you, Dan Ingram.